today we will be talking on a very crucial topic and we've got Right Reverend Dr. Bishop Raymond Vikramasinghe, Chairman of the Catholic National Commission for Migrant and Refugees, um, who, who is the present bishop at Gaul, of Gaul as well. A uh, very good morning to you. Good morning to you. And uh, first and foremost, uh, as we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic is a massive issue, which is a global pandemic, of course. It's not uh, just related to Sri Lanka itself. So what does the world leader say, especially the Holy Father, Pope Francis, uh, about the migrant workers? Can you elaborate on this to our listeners? Um, good morning to all our listeners and uh, those who are concerned about the migrants and refugees. And uh, particularly in the Catholic Church, um, Pope Francis uh, took a lot of initiatives to uh, be with, uh, to show compassion and love uh, according to the Christian teaching uh, to these most vulnerable sector of our people and particularly those uh, who are refugees, who are um, dying, uh, sort of, you know, losing their lives, if I would say, uh, in in thousands and thousands, uh, and for others who are migrants all over the world who are looking for greener pastures. Every year, the the Holy Father, whoever the Holy Father is, whoever the Pope is, um, issues a statement um, on the on the International Day of Migrants and Refugees. And the um, present Holy Father, having the experience of uh, Lampedusa, as if you remember, and uh, and and Lesbos, Lesbos, you know, um, where the, where hundreds of uh, migrants died, um, went into the place. Pers- personally and brought in some of the Syrian refugees to Vatican and and protected them, gave them accommodation and so on and and told the whole world to integrate, welcome, protect these um, and and promote the cause of uh, the migrants and refugees. So um, it's important that this, this particular four points that the Holy Father is uh, presenting to the particularly to the European Union and to the developed world if I would use the terminology uh, to 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 welcome the the stranger and and that because he, he or she is a brother and sister of the human family so some were affected due to various reasons uh, when one crosses an international boundary he becomes a refugee or otherwise you know he can be an internally displaced person in the same country he's displaced from place to place so whatever the condition is whatever even for economic reasons those who are going out we call the migrant workers and so on uh, have their own rights so with this new present situation of the COVID-19 as you asked me uh, the Holy Father is asking the world community to be more considerate, more more compassionate, and uh, to keep to the United Nations High Commissioner for, for Refugees um, statutes, not to send them to the persecuting countries if they are coming from there. It's like called the non-refoulement uh, agreement. Um, so we are asked to uh, safeguard, you know, their their rights in a, in a very special way. So, um, so the Holy Father continues to rouse the conscience of the whole community, the whole world, in speaking even about the environment, in speaking about uh, the rights of every person, um, integral development of even this vulnerable sector of society is a right of every, every uh, validly elected government. So uh, he's challenging, I would say, to the many world leaders. And I must say also that there are many world leaders who, who think like Holy Father also. Uh, many European countries, even Australia, New Zealand, Canada, you know, uh, like that, uh, if I would say a line of countries, um, even in the Asian region who have welcomed the refugees like a very poor country like Bangladesh welcoming the Rohingya refugees. So um, I think the Catholic Church uh, has always positively um, looked at 
the the care of the migrants uh, and the asylum seekers. So um, this is what I could say that the Holy Father is uh, summarizing the whole scripture. I would say the Bible, you know, of you, everyone is my brother, my sister. And uh, what do you propose the government to do so uh, on the sake of, of these migrant workers? Yes, um, also including uh, we have um, the separate commissions for migrants, um, pontifical commissions for migrants, international commissions. So they are proposing, also we in Sri Lanka, we are proposing that these people be given, uh, first of all, recognition, give them the rights of, of, you know, of these innocent people. Uh, the rights for education, right for uh, to work, you know, for to find some occupation for them to live, and and rights for health care, you know, and and um, independently of um, uh, of legal status to ensure access to national pension schemes if there are, you know, and uh, transferability of benefits uh, if they are in moving to another country. Um, so uh, they should not be like our national or stateless people. So when they come to a country, that they be treated according to the laws of the international conventions and covenants huh? and uh, uh, citizenship rights. So uh, and and also they are asking um, to offer them like the, at least a temporary custody and safe uh, foster homes for them, right? If there are unaccompanied or separated minors, that they should be taken care of well. And a very special request not to separate if the parents are there, the minors from the elders. So uh, these are some hard truths and realities. And the church is trying to see also to their day-to-day um, living. Therefore, we are asking every state um, stakeholders to uh, see to um, their, um, I mean, uh, provisions and so on, you know, whatever they need every day. So, um, in short, to, to make sure that they have a dignified life wherever the country that they have now landed. You know, if they are in Sri Lanka, uh, we would humbly request that that they be welcomed and be treated like human beings. So that's um, what uh, I could say that I have also been involved in this for a long time and in fact wrote my doctoral thesis on refugees. So I, I know you know what I am talking about also. Um, it's a hard fact because some of the countries say uh, it is called donor fatigue. They say we are tired of helping the migrants and refugees. It can be true, but I, I am just saying that uh, in, a, in a very uh, sustainable uh, evaluation, uh, respected evaluation, justifiable evaluation uh, to choose the right people who are really in need and, and um, help our world to grow together as a human family. You know, we are a wonderful family, whether whatever the caste, creed um, is not the matter. Uh, but we are brothers and sisters in the same human family. So we'll stand by it, and uh, the Holy Father and the whole Catholic Church, you're asking me as a Catholic bishop, so mm -hmm. as a Catholic Church, you'll stand by them, you know, and we will work uh, on my behalf. I have a national director called Father Srian Fernando, and, and, and we are now working together we as a team with many other stakeholders, even in Sri Lanka, if happy to you, you will be happy to hear that. Um, I think even SLBC and others are also part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very happy about it. And, and we, will, we will certainly work and raise a voice uh, for them. Thank you very much. And we've been talking to Right Reverend Dr. Bishop Raymond Vikramasinghe, Chairman of the Catholic National Commission for Migrant and refugee workers out there, and also the present Bishop of Gaul, Father Anton Shrian, National Director of Catholic National Commission to the Migrant. A uh, very good morning to you, Father. Good morning to all of you. And Father, can you please explain uh, to our listeners in a layman's point of view about the present issues faced uh, by the retainers, retainees and also the people who are still working in uh, other countries, especially the Middle East? 
Yeah, and uh, first of all, thanks. Um, thankful to all of you as for the for SLBC for opening up this discussion on our own uh, brothers and sisters who are working in Middle East countries and elsewhere all over the globe. And as we understand, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic has created a, a special situation which uh, Bishop Raymond Vikramasinghe, our chairman, Bishop, uh, explained previously. And uh, most of, mostly we see that uh, our people, our migrant uh, workers from Sri Lanka, are facing a number of issues in Middle East countries, very especially the West Asian countries. And uh, at present, uh, we hear that there are 67 deaths recorded already uh, yeah, until uh, 8th of uh, October, so which is a quite a high number. And uh, we cannot bring down the bodies because of these health issues and then uh, the current uh, expenses that they have to bear and nobody to respond to those uh, issues. So uh, the situation is aggravating uh, because of this COVID-19. And the primary thing that we need to address is the vulnerability of the migrant workers. And we know in the Middle East countries, under the kafala system, the migrant uh, workers' immigration status is legally bound to an individual employer or a sponsor. Therefore, uh, they are so vulnerable. And uh, their vulnerability adds into this pandemic and they become so helpless. So the migrant workers have, uh, there are a number of migrant workers who have lost their jobs, uh, were not paid their wages, and were not able to access to essential services. And some of them, uh, most of the migrant workers, uh, their passports are confiscated by the employee. And therefore, they cannot return to uh, Sri Lanka whenever or if they want. And even if they have their passports, and we see that uh, the repatriation services give priority to the students rather than the uh, migrant workers. Of course, they are also important, but uh, less priority is given to the migrant workers. Therefore, they are still left behind uh, in their own respective countries of destination. Therefore, uh, there are a lot of uh, difficulties that they face in these countries. So uh, we see uh, many issues in the countries of destination. And we are also reported about a massive scam of uh, unscrupulous persons profiting from migrant workers awaiting repatriation from destination countries and the charges that they impose on them for articles and then also for the hotels that they have to pay uh, exorbitant uh, prices for those who uh, return uh, during the quarantine period for them to stay at different hotels. So these issues uh, continually uh, baffle the, the migrant workers and then we request uh, the government also to respond to these issues. I, we know that uh, it is not a a simple situation, it is so complicated, but uh, what we can offer is there is a network of uh, uh, coordination which the government can take from the uh, NGOs and then the like-minded organizations and of which we are also part of it. I am actually speaking not only on behalf of us, but also a huge network where there are a lot of uh, coordinated effort to respond to the issues of these migrants. And also we would like to uh, shed light on the uh, grievances of these people, very especially the, the wage that has not been paid and uh, return ticket money that has to be paid by the employer. And those uh, issues have to be addressed, of course, at the government level, government to government and uh, from agency to agency, and uh, that these migrant workers, we have brought sort of a lot of revenue to this country. We have been, uh, we have been calling them uh, Rata Viru, uh, the heroes of the country. But when they are in trouble, we, we have not given enough priority to them. Therefore, I think we have to address those issues and also look into the, the returnees. Uh, once they return, how can they invest whatever the money that they have for new uh, businesses and what the govern what support government can do and so on and so forth so then uh, we can uh, help them for a better social and economic reintegration 
and if they are uh, if they are willing to uh, migrate again uh, use this t- period to improve their skills so that we may send the skilled laborers not unskilled laborers so those issues are there and uh, we see these issues faced by our migrant brethren both in the countries of destination and also there are returnees and any message uh, to the listeners uh, father yeah um what we would uh, request uh, the government and the people also is uh, we need to develop a network network and calculating and evaluating the strengths of each uh, group who would like to support as a catholic church we have our own strengths we are linked to the international communities to our faith based uh, communities so the government can take the, the advantage of the church uh, to support these migrant workers and very really especially from our listeners uh, all over the country we also would like to request to uh, get rid of this phobia of the returnees we have to help them they have been uh, bringing uh, foreign revenue to this country so do not isolate them do not isolate them do not treat their children uh, as strangers Uh, with uh, fear but help them to uh, come back of course following the health guidelines given by the health authorities respecting all those norms and regulations but not to isolate them not to uh, corner them just because they have returned from abroad but help to help them welcome them and promote them and then to integrate them and for the government we request to work in coordination with the other governments and then uh, with the church as well and then to support these migrant workers we hear sometimes uh, they are in centers what you call uh, packed in centers they have no health uh, facilities given so on so and so on and so on and so forth so there are a lot of issues that have to be addressed so we request the government also to help these migrant workers who are own brothers and uh, sisters who have uh, gone uh, and earned something and they returned to this country has helped our economy therefore we request the government to help these people considering them as our own brothers and uh, sisters as the holy father continually reminds us nobody should be left behind nobody should be left behind nobody should be abandoned just because of his creed or caste or uh, social status but all have to be uh, treated as our own brothers and sisters so that's my request and uh, uh, wish for our migrant brethren and from the citizens of this beautiful country our motherland sri lanka thank you very much uh, father and uh, well we were speaking to the national director of catholic national commission for migrants father anton shrian thank you so much for getting in touch with us thank you god bless you god bless you too